My name is Liz and I've lived in Squamish for four years and this is our Dodge 2008 Sprinter van. So this van was built out when we bought it. Some changes have been made but we have the sink and kitchen area facing over here just to give us lots of space. There used to be a shower right here and a seating area. We still kept the seating area but we changed it to more of like a lounge seat which is super nice because then you can kind of sit here. I do the dishes sometimes here, it's pretty funny. So I'm a little bit hard to reach. Where we keep our clothes, it's where we store everything. And we have these latches so that it doesn't open while we drive. I can chop up my vegetables, prep, and then cook at the same time at our stove. And we also have an oven, which is really nice because then I can do sheet pan dinners and it's less of a mess. More storage over here, up top. We are looking at getting some more latches. With this van, it's a never ending project. <laughs> I live in a van because I do a lot of guiding work. I work with kids, I do summer camps, mainly with climbing and sea kayaking. And my partner, he is a raft guide. So our work requires us to be flexible and move around. I mean, we're also young and we can't afford living in Squamish or Whistler full time with the wage we get as guides, unfortunately. Our freshwater setup, uh, we have a large tank. It's quite loud now. We chose our bed going lengthwise. Some vans have them uh, widthwise. This is the tall version of the Dodge. It's also a stretched version. So the bed, we're also tall. Like my partner is, he's like 6'2". So he's super tall, we could never sleep the other way. So we chose to do it this way. It's quite high because we have a bike storage underneath, but it works really well and all we wanted, we didn't, we just wanted our bed to be stationary. We didn't want to move around or anything, just keep it super simple. We found that having a shower in the van was actually not great for the condensation because it just gets muggy in here. So that's why every time we cook, we always have the fan on. When Dylan first bought the van, one thing that he was finding difficult that many people we've heard with vans struggle with is the mold um, under, under the mattress. The first solution to that problem was drilling holes. <laughs> that didn't help at all. Um, and then after we cleaned up all the mold and got a new mattress, so we have like a memory foam mattress, super nice. Uh, we got this, it's like a mesh, and essentially it just allows for airflow under the bed, and that has kept the mold away, and it's been super nice, and it's pretty reasonable. I think it's $80 on Amazon. I like that I can have my own space, small space granted, but that I can move it around if I need to. Like, I don't need to feel like I need to be in one place. We went on a trip once up the Ilaho River and we had five kayaks on the roof and a raft and four kayaks under the bed. Just above uh, the seating area in the cab, we have um, just storage in here. We haven't done too much just because it's kind of a big area, but we have bins here that we fill with. Right now I have all of my art supplies in here. And under here, right now, this is just the beer storage. This is a fridge. It's actually just a normal bar fridge. We are going to order a 12 volt fridge that's more efficient, that works with the batteries. Right now we have an inverter. This only runs when it's really hot. We can always keep track of it. We do have a, um, like a battery monitor. So we can check how many volts are being used. So right now it's really sunny. And the only thing I've used today is the fan and the lights. So right now we're at 100%. We found it hard to put in like sliding drawers or anything yet because we keep changing what sports we're doing based on which season. But we have room for three bikes. Right now we just have one. So with the homemade bike racks, you do have to disassemble your bike. Like we always take the front wheel off and then essentially just the front attachment points for the wheel. Those go like this pin goes in through this metal tube and that's essentially what keeps the bike in. As you can see the bed is the perfect height for having the bike in here. So right now we have camping gear in the back, this is my climbing gear, and then we have hanging storage for our shoes. The hose that we use 
to refill the water tank. I think it holds quite a bit. I think it's like 40 liters or something. It's a lot. It stretches all the way back. This is actually a shower. Right now we only have one battery, but we're getting another one and we are replacing the inverter to work with the lithium batteries. Working as a guide is very seasonal, so we have periods of time where we don't work and we don't need to live in one place. So it's super convenient to just pack up everything and then go traveling in the States or around Canada. On my off days, take my whole house wherever I want to stay for a little while. And I think the convenience of where you're home is and your things are is very convenient for the lifestyle that I live right now. I've only lived in it in the summer so far, A because we've had mechanical problems and it's been in the shop and B because as guides we in the winter work with ski guiding and that requires us to live at heli ski lodges. So we haven't needed to live in the van because we've been given places to live in the winter. It's also a bit more convenient, it gets really cold. <laughs> but we have lived in it in the winter for short periods of time to go ski touring and be close to, um, you know, be in resort towns without, you know, spending all our money. <laughs> Living with a person that's six foot two in a tiny space is definitely not easy. <laughs> you get bumped around a lot, you get used to not having space to stretch out as much. Um, you do get used to it though definitely a challenge. Also, for some reason, things get really cluttered really quickly in a small space, especially when you're two people. So if you're not diligent with your systems and cleaning things up properly, it's, it's not easy. So if you're a very messy person and trying to van life, I'm sorry, but it's not going to be glorious. <laughs> I would advise not to be cheap with the vehicle you buy because mechanical problems when you're living in a van is the worst. It's your house and suddenly it's out of action, so where do you go? And I think it suits an adventurous type of person who, you know, can roll with the punches. I think that's, you know, moving, coming into this lifestyle, I remember struggling with certain things like, where do we sleep at night? What do we do now? Um, how do we fit all of our gear in one spot? Like, it's just, you also have to be a creative person because if something, if you need to fix something, you have to be quick on your feet because you use it every day. <laughs> and in a small space, problems mount pretty quickly. If you're thinking about a sprinter, if you don't have enough money to get a new one or a good one with less than 150,000 K, don't. <laughs> These things are notorious for having problems once they get over half of their lifespan. If you get it already done, make sure that you ask enough questions about, so you know that when you take it over, you're not questioning what's going on, how the batteries work, what insulation's going on in there, um, you know, what kind of propane uh, setup you're working with, water, do you have hot water, is the pump working, like how to drain it. That's how our hot water broke. Somebody didn't drain it properly. Um, yeah, just know what you're getting into <laughs> because you're literally getting into it for a long time. So I'd say just ask enough questions is maybe the biggest thing and have, have a bit of a financial backup because shit's gonna happen. <laughs> you just gotta deal with it. <laughs> Especially sharing it with another person, I think the biggest lessons I've had to learn is, or relearn, is sharing. <laughs> you know, you move out from home and you have your own space. Um, so you have to definitely compromise on your space. Um, be mindful, because when we're van lifing, we are taking up space that sometimes people don't want us taking up. So just not making a lot of noise where you're camping, being mindful, like we only use the water um, since it doesn't, since it does drain out, we don't use it on asphalt and stuff where it's going to leave a big water mark. I do like to know what's happening and what's going on and kind of having a plan, but I've kind of learned to let that go <laughs> and kind of just become more of a open person to change and to life because things don't always run smoothly and I think these vans are kind of a metaphor for that. Especially in Squamish with, maybe I can just point on quickly the 
influx of van lifers here because it's definitely noticeable bylaws become quite vicious and I think just for people coming here I see a lot of people that come here for a good time not a long time and that is unfortunately a reason why lots of our spots have become bylaw you know it's where the bylaw comes and finds us and I think I just point on that that if you are looking into going into the van life that the world isn't always your oyster. You have to give something back if you want to receive uh, what you're looking for. So I just say that if you're going to buy in life, be courteous and mindful. And if you think that it's bothering people where you are or what you're doing, you can move. They can't. <laughs> so I just say be a good human and pick up your trash. <laughs> and for the love of God, don't throw your toilet paper everywhere and dig a hole because <laughs> we can see what you're doing. So many people are stressed about not having enough time, but I think there's time if you use it correctly. So I think my philosophy is to just go with what is offered you and, you know, focus your energy on what you want to do and just be positive because <laughs> everything's better if you have a positive mindset, even if things kind of suck in the moment. If you would like to be featured on different media, there's a form you can fill out to be on the podcast or to have your van toured. And if you're interested in watching more alternative dwelling tours like this, we upload every single Sunday. So hit subscribe and new Van Life and Chill podcasts every Thursday. Thanks everyone for watching.